Hey guys, it's Yogi here and welcome to the channel for the 20th episode of the in-depth track guide series for Assetto Corsa Competizione, where I've been sharing my knowledge on each circuit and giving you juicy tips for each one to help you improve your lap times and better your ability at driving each track. So if this is your first time here and viewing one of these in-depth track guide videos, then please consider subscribing and also taking a look at all the other videos in the playlist. So for this 20th episode, we're going to be taking a look at the first of the three circuits on the new Freedom DLC pack and that is Watkins Glen in the USA. The track's length is 3.45 miles which equates to 5.55 kilometers. It has 11 corners although I count more personally but according to the official records and all the stats on the circuit it is 11 official turns. It requires a high downforce setup with medium to hard suspension and then your key overtaking spots are going to be in turn one. The entrance to the inner loop which is the four corners that aren't counted for the circuit but whatever turn six turn seven turn eight and turn nine as always with these track guides we'll kick off with the pit entry which can be found just on the right hand side on the exit of the final corner you're going to need to brake a little bit before you go into the turn and take a little bit less speed than you usually would and then brake just as you get to the second white little dot there just as you go underneath the bridge in order to get the car slowed down for the pit speed limiter line this can be found just as the barrier turns off to the right there and the pit boxes on the right hand side of the pit lane actually begin and then for the pit exit line you want to be referencing the black Fanatec flag as just after that is two white lines that span the width of the pit exit and the first is the disengage pit limiter line. At this point you can accelerate down the slope towards the inside of turn one but you will need to lift a little bit as you go through here you cannot take it flat out and then of course stay to the right hand side on the merge line before you get to turn two. So moving on to the main circuit and we of course begin with turn one. Our breaking point that we're looking for is just after the 200 board on the left hand side of the track that's up on the fence there. We're going to be braking hard and shifting down into second or third gear depending on the car's gear ratios. We're then going to be looking to hook up an apex just here on the lower tier of the two tier curbing that's there on the inside. Do not go up onto the upper tier but use that bottom tier. There's quite a bit of camber in this corner so make sure to to use that to your advantage and as this is a rumble strip curb providing you stay off that upper tier you'll be fine to use it in the wet conditions. At the exit of the corner is quite a generous amount of unpainted tarmac that will be very very enticing and encouraging you to go and wander out there however track limits will bite you if you go and put all four wheels over the edge of the red and yellow rumble strip and smooth curbing that is here you can use this curbing in the dry conditions no problem and most of the time in the wet conditions as well you should be able to run this curb providing that the car is planted and you haven't lost any grip trying to accelerate hard off the corner next up we have the sweeping right hander of turn two there is no breaking point for this corner it should be completely flat out in the dry conditions in the wet conditions depending on how wet it actually is will depend on whether you need to lift off the throttle a little bit but you should be in fourth or fifth gear depending on the car's gear ratios at this point as you continue to accelerate through generally what I try to do is actually stay off the curb here on the inside in both the dry and wet conditions you can brush it in a dry but certainly don't touch it in the wet climbing the hill and getting to the crest we are met with turn three the left hander here again we should be completely flat out in the dry conditions maybe a slight lift on the throttle in the wet depending on how wet the conditions actually are we should be in fifth gear at this point there's quite a high amount of camber and then once again just like turn two you don't need to ride the curb here on the inside you'll be fine to just kiss it and brush it as you come through the corner only do this in the dry conditions however and completely avoid it in the wet next up is the long right hander of turn four and just like the two corners prior we are going to be completely flat out through here in the dry conditions however you will also be completely flat out through here in the wet as well you should not need to lift you should be in fifth gear as you are continuing to accelerate onto the back straight again there is a moderate amount of camber here and once more it is one of those curbs here on the inside that you'll be fine to brush in the dry conditions however you'll probably want to be completely avoiding it in the wet 
Next up, we're into the four corners that don't officially count in the track stats. However, they are four actual corners. Our breaking point is going to be at the Marshall Hut there on the left-hand side of the track, just after the 300 board. We're going to be braking hard from the left-hand side, pointing the car directly at the inside kerb. You're going to be shifting down into third or fourth gear, depending on personal preference, and you want to be climbing up onto this kerb as much as you possibly can. Absolutely hammer it with the car. It's going to feel uncomfortable the first few times that you're going to do it, but the car should take it providing you haven't got too much steering angle going in and it's by far the best line going into the chicane that will set you up to get through the rest of it. You can do this in both the dry and wet conditions just make sure that you're not braking as you go over the curb so brake before it, lift off as you go over and then brake again just as you then turn the car left and the rest of these curbs in the chicane are also quite big however these ones you just want to be skimming and kissing them you don't want to be climbing up over them like the first one that I pointed out on the entrance to the corner especially the very last curb the one on the right as you come out through the exit of this inner loop chicane as that's going to be the one that's going to heavily unsettle you for the following long right hander but these curves will be generally fine to skim in both the dry and wet conditions after the inner loop chicane we pretty much immediately come into the long sweeping right hander of turn five uh, yeah, do the math. Anyway, this sweeping right-hander doesn't have a braking zone going into it. You're going to be coming from roughly about the middle of the circuit as you come out of the chicane and come in towards the inside curb as you just lift and let the car coast through the corner. Just before you get to the Marshall Hut on the inside is going to be your apex. At that point, there is when you want to get hard on the throttle and accelerate out of the turn. And then, as for the inside curb itself, you'll be fine to run it in the dry conditions. However, you'll want to take caution with it in the wet. Coming out through the exit, you have quite a wide rumble strip. This one can catch you out with track limits, so try and avoid dipping any of your wheels over the back edge of the red and yellow rumble strip curbing. If you keep all four wheels on the curb, generally you should be fine. However, this is a curb with quite an aggressive bump in it towards the exit so running out too far wide out here and using too much curb could be a little bit costly you'll therefore want to be careful with it in the dry conditions and pretty much avoid it entirely in the wet next up is the left hander of turn six and our braking point is going to be on the right hand side of the track just before we get to the concrete drain that is there we're going to come from the right hand side of the circuit and come in towards the inside curb on the left we're going to trail brake a little bit as we come into the corner and aim to hook up a late apex you kind of want to be running just about half a car width of the inside curb as you come through the corner there is quite a high amount of camber so use that to your advantage as you aim to hook up this apex in second to third gear get hard on throttle as you come out through the exit and the curbing here on the inside you can use in both the dry conditions pretty much no issue as you accelerate off the corner using the camber to your advantage, you're going to be met with a double width rumble strip curb here on the outside. This does narrow down into a single width curb as you continue to run along it, so bear that in mind as there is grass on the outside of it. This is a curb that you can use in the dry conditions, absolutely no issue. However, in the wet conditions, you probably want to avoid it as you'll be looking to try and translate the traction as you come off the turn. For the next right hander we're going to be on the left hand side of the circuit as far left as we can possibly get and we're going to be doing some very late braking, braking at the 100 board there that we can see just before the turn. We're going to be braking hard and as we come into the entrance of this corner we're going to be turning in, continuing to trail brake through the turn, letting the car roll about half a car width off the inside curb before bringing it in tighter and aiming to hook up a late apex that you can see indicated here. We should be in second gear as we hit this point accelerating out of the corner you want to be fairly cautious with the throttle as you're going to be continuing to turn and the rear will want to start wandering there is a moderate to high amount of camber in this turn that should help you and then when it comes to the curb usage on the inside you'll be fine to use it in both the dry and wet conditions but you don't need to ride it too aggressively on the exit of turn seven there is no curb out here instead there is just a bit of unpainted tarmac in its place so make sure to use this available width on the outside 
side of the corner here to your advantage and do so in both the dry and wet conditions. Keeping to the left hand side of the circuit as we approach turn 8 we're going to be looking for the 200 board that's there on either side of the track. About 20 to 30 feet after that is going to be when we get hard on the brakes and we're going to shift down into second gear. Trail braking into the corner ever so slightly as we run and clip an apex on the inside curb here at this point. There is a slight moderate amount of camber in this corner to help us get in towards the apex and this inside curb we can use in both dry and wet conditions no issue. Coming out to the exit again like turn one we've got some unpainted tarmac out here that looks quite inviting. We however do not want to be dipping all four wheels over the edge of the red and yellow curbing as that will exceed track limits so make sure to keep two wheels on the serrated curb that's on the outside here. Do this in the dry conditions to your heart's content however in the wet conditions as this is a traction zone coming off of this corner from quite a slow speed turn you'll be wanting to avoid it entirely in the wet. Next up is the very tricky left hander of turn 9 and our reference point is going to be the last AWS board that's on the right hand side of the circuit that's going to be our braking point where we're going to brake hard and once again trail brake coming into the entry of the corner we want to be a little bit off the inside curve for the most part before hooking up a late apex in either first or second gear the car is going to be reluctant wanting to turn in and hook into this apex curb as the crest continues all the way through the corner and it doesn't peak until until we're basically into the traction zone. When you do reach the inside curb though, you'll be fine to use it in both the dry and wet conditions. When it comes to the exit, as I mentioned earlier, the peak of the crest is right as you're getting hard on the throttle. So you may need to be a little bit hesitant and cautious of that. There is a little bit additional unpainted tarmac on the outside here before you get to the rumble strip curb. Use the tarmac to your advantage in both the dry and wet conditions. But when it comes to this serrated curb, only use it in the dry and avoid it entirely in the wet. Next up is the penultimate turn of turn 10, the sweeping left hander. There is no real braking needed coming into this corner in the dry conditions. Instead, what you want to do just before you get to the 100 foot board there on either side of the circuit is simultaneously lift off the throttle and turn the car in towards the inside curb. This lift that you need to do doesn't need to be a big one, it's just fairly small. But you want to be hooking up the apex just here on the inside curb. You should be in fourth gear at this point. There is quite a high amount of camber that should help you through the turn. And then when it comes to using this serrated curb on the inside, you'll be fine to do so in both the dry and also wet conditions. On the exit is a nice double width curb which we can use quite aggressively. Providing we keep two wheels touching this curb will be fine and staying within track limits. The first half of the curb is serrated, the second half is smooth and then beyond that we've got some unpainted tarmac and some gravel. And then when it comes to using this curb in the dry and wet conditions of course use it to your heart's content in the dry, however you will want to take some caution using it in the wet. Last up is the final corner of turn 11, a sweeping right hander. It is very very easy to overdrive this corner so do be wary of that coming into the braking point which is going to be just before the yellow line which indicates the merging lane for the pit entry. It's just going to be a quick short stab of the brake and dropping the car down into third gear as we aim to hook out the apex here on the inside. You want to be using this high amount of camber that's in this corner to try and get as close to the inside curb as you possibly can. You don't necessarily need to ride the inside curb, but if you do find yourself running down and clipping this inside curb, you'll be fine to do so in the dry conditions. However, I found that you'll need to take caution in the wet as it is quite easy to spin the car as you try and apply the power. As you're applying that power coming off the turn, you'll be coming out to this nice wide exit curb out here which is half serrated, half rumble strip. There is a barrier that is there to greet you on the outside if you get a little bit too eager with the throttle and get on it too early, so do be cautious with that. In the dry conditions, you'll be able to run this curb and flirt with that wall as much as you want. However, in the wet conditions, you can run this curb sometimes, you probably want to take caution with it just because it may hurt your traction coming off the corner and affecting your run to the start finish line. So now that we've completed the breakdown of each individual corner, let's take a look at piecing it all together at full racing speed.
So now that we have completed a competitive lap at Watkins Glen, I just want to finish the episode with a little bit of a disclaimer. Please keep in mind the characteristics of your car, the car setup and the car conditions that you're driving in. Some cars may be able to brake or handle curves slightly better than others and obviously the car that I've used here in this episode for the demonstration is one of the worst cars for attacking curbs and it seemed to handle that large curb that you need to hammer going into the entry to the inner loop chicane just fine. So you should be fine there providing you're not running the car too low to the ground with too hard suspension. And Whilst I did point out which curbs you can and can't use in both the dry and wet conditions, do take note of these and apply accordingly depending on the conditions that you're racing in as you may need to adapt slightly. Other than that though, thank you very much for watching this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed and learned something from it and gained some additional lap time here at Watkins Glen. And of course, please let me know if you did. And if you have any questions, feel free to fire away in the comment section below as well. Until the next video, have fun, stay safe and take care.